Very good. I want to thank NASPI and Dr. Burke for inviting me to talk about mindfulness. I'd like to thank Bhante Sankey for your beautiful introduction. We probably should have gotten together because this may be repeating some of what you said, but I think that's okay. I think for people who are being introduced to it, it's, it's a good thing. I work for a small company, Mindtation, whose mission is to help people have a full heart and a clear mind and live with joy. But that's really very difficult right now, as all of you know, during this time of pandemic, more than ever, there's more anxiety, more stress. And I just read there's more abuse of alcohol, more abuse of drugs to help us um, to try to cope with this additional stress that we're going through. And especially for our students, trying to figure everything out. Well, we are too, faculty and staff. So I'm here to talk about ways to naturally uh, calm the body and the mind and also to teach that we've forgotten the gifts that we've been given. It's in our DNA. Our body naturally can reset our whole system, but we tend to look outside to get the, um, the healing that we need when it's within us, which I think was introduced. I would like to just differentiate between meditation and mindfulness, and sometimes it's semantics, but meditation is a practice, it's a tool that cultivates mindfulness and it uses the breath to help us achieve mindfulness. There are four different ways, laying down, sitting, standing or walking um, for your meditation. And most people prefer the seated meditation. And it is secular. I know we had a Buddhist monk and I have my own religion, but I've sat with, uh, Catholic priests, and they practice mindfulness. I practiced with atheists. So it is secular. Um, it's for everyone. And why? Because it works. That's why the monks promote it, because it brings you joy and it brings calm into people's lives. I'm going to, I hope, share two slides with you, and you can read it on your own. And I'm going to keep talking if they come up. All right, and, and I do, I'll do it this way. Um, these are the benefits. This isn't a wish list. These are benefits actually based on empirical data, and it's research that has been done around the world, and it is exciting to see because 20 years ago, we weren't able to bring this to our administrators at colleges and universities to encourage them to please incorporate mindfulness and meditation into the curriculum. We do need the content. We do need the content, but we tend to focus on just what's in people's heads. And we need to focus on the human being. And I'm not sure that this is going to give me and I apologize. I, I am clearly new to this. I don't, I can't click onto this one, Steve. So I will have these posted, but they're just lists of all the many, many, many benefits. Mindfulness, on the other hand, is, and I'm going to get out of here now, I hope. Yeah. Mindfulness is wise attention. It's aware of the present moment by moment by moment without judgment. And as human beings, that's very, very difficult. We judge everything, hot, cold, sweet, sour. We like it, we don't like it. But it, the point is when we're mindful, we are aware of now. And that's the only real time we ever really have is the present moment right now. The past is based up on our memories and it is gone. And the future is, hasn't happened yet. Will I get COVID? Will I lose my job? That isn't a reality yet. So we don't want the past and the future to hijack our lives. We want to be present. When you eat, you eat. When you work, you work. And when you play, you play. Um, we tend to live very mindlessly. And the past and future are based on the stories that we tell ourselves. So we, I guess mindfulness is a way for us to develop a positive relationship, exactly what um, Bhante said. 
is to develop a relationship with our thoughts so that when we're done with our practice of meditation, that we can go into journaling. And, and the cool thing is, I think there's a presentation on journaling right after this. Journaling is very, very powerful way to get in touch with our feeling and accepting. So when we are being mindful and in the moment, we let the thoughts come. We don't want to block out all thoughts, but when they do come, we don't give them any energy. We don't think about them. We don't tag them as good or bad. They're thoughts and we let them go and we bring ourselves back to the breath. After we're done with our practice, we write all those thoughts down in a journal. I'd like to do two activities right now with you that are mindful activities and you need to be present in order um, to accomplish, accomplish these. But if students or you find yourself very anxious all of a sudden, you have an anxious thought or feeling, they, they are very effective. So you can do it with me or watch, but I encourage you to do it with me. Hands out front, lock them, turn it up and bring it up to your chest and then pull it to your chest. This is like giving yourself a self hug. It activates both sides of the brain and now we're going to add three breaths to it. Like you're blowing out a candle. This is very effective. When you first start doing this, um, it, you may not feel the full benefits or you might feel like you're not, but it's like anything. If you're trying to achieve something, it's like getting to a location where you have to go through the weeds. At first it's difficult, but after you go there time and time again, you create a path. So every time you do this, it will bring you a sense of calm. Um, and I will give Dr. Berg um, all of the information on the scientific principles why this calms the body. There is another one that I'd like to share with you, tapping. Some of you are very familiar already with tapping, but tapping touches key points in the body that calm the body. And this is just one technique that I'm going to share with you. And some of you are aware of tapping, and this is just one method. But tapping the breastbone right underneath is the thymus, and beneath that is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the longest nerve in the body. It's from the medulla down to the end of the abdomen. It connects with all of your vital organs. And so this one's students like this one. Um, and it calms them. When your organs are, when you are tense and anxious, this nerve has an impact. So the old saying, this saying is a little different than the one you're used to, but what happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. It spreads all the um, anxiety throughout your body. So when you tap, you're going to smile. And it may seem absolutely ridiculous, especially if you're really nervous to smile or if you're angry. But when you smile, the muscles automatically re um, release good positive brain chemicals. So you smile. And we're going to say something exactly what um, Bonte said. But when you smile, you can say this after me and follow along. I am safe. I am happy. I am healthy and I am at ease in the world. We'll do it one more time. I am safe, I am happy, I am healthy, and I'm at ease in the world. When you're not at ease, you are disease, which causes disease, and that's where it came from um, to, to know this. So we want to be aware of our thoughts, we want to be aware because we establish a relationship. We identify those things that give us joy, that give us pain, so we can deal with them. The hard part is letting the thoughts go. But it's also about learning about who we are as people, that we are not the stories we think we are. We think about ourselves and we think we know ourselves and mindfulness allows us to go through all those layers like an onion until we get to the real me. The real me and the real you, we are perfect as we are. And a lot of people think mindfulness is about changing yourself, that you'll never be angry again, you'll always remain calm. Well, probably not, but we're giving you techniques to bring you back to that calm. 
But when you find out who you are, you will realize that you are perfect. And when you feel that sense of being perfect and bliss and connectedness to humanity, it's very, very difficult to have hate and anger for other human beings. And we need this in our world right now. So the more we can practice these activities to help calm our mind and body, it helps us, as you saw on the list, to be healthy and happy and, and also to have a happier world. So it's also about learning who we are in the sense that the stories that we hear, who we think we are, when we tell ourselves I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I don't think I can ever pass this class, I don't want to talk to her because I already know what she's going to say. Those are all stories and, and they're wasting our time and they're, they're stealing the time from us. So when we get to who we are and realize we're perfect, we are allowed to be in the present moment. And I'm going really fast because I want to share one of the most important things for today. Our body is made up of frequencies. I am now a vibrational sound bowl therapist. I'm loving my retirement. I'm a Maris Dean at Schoolcraft College. And now I'm a, a, a vibrational sound bowl therapist. Our bodies are constantly moving. All of our organs have their own frequencies, our whole body. And I don't know if you can see this well, but when our body is stressed out, this is the way it should be, it's flowing. And when we get stressed out, the cells, the frequencies are off. And sometimes when we listen to certain sounds, it's called brain entrainment. We realign the frequencies. So I won't take you through the full, I'll go a little bit faster, but I also have a relaxation technique that I'd like to use with everyone. We're gonna start out using two square breaths Inhale to the count of four, hold. Exhale to the count of four, hold to the count of four. We're going to do it twice. Then you're going to continue breathing deeply at your own rate. If you don't feel comfortable keeping your eyes closed, you can open your eyes, but I encourage you to keep your eyes closed. Listen to the directions and, and follow the sound from the bowls. The bowls are designed um, and if I had, a, if I had a, all the right equipment, we would have done a full sound bowl um, thing, but we're going to start, listen to the words as I talk and continue to breathe deeply at your own rate. Relax your face. Relax your mouth. Drop the tongue from the roof of your mouth. When your tongue is relaxed, your body's relaxed. Relax your jaw. Follow the sound. Feel the sound. Feel the tension leaving from your body. Relax your neck. Feel the tension dissolve. Relax your shoulders. Continue breathing deeply. Relax your upper arms. Feel how comfortable you are, how relaxed. Relax your lower arms. Relax each finger. Feel how the tension is leaving your body. Feel how good you feel, how calm. Relax your feet.
relax each toe. Enjoy this state you've created for yourself. Keep your eyes closed for a few moments. Enjoy the feeling. Enjoy the calm. Continue to breathe deeply. Now return, open your eyes. And I went through that very quickly, but I do this, I have done this with students and they said it puts them in a very comfortable place. And I encourage them to listen to my recording of this before they have an exam or if they're just feeling stressed out, it brings them back to the present moment and it, it, it relaxes every part of the body. So I'm sorry that this is really fast, but thank you for letting me share this. So open your eyes and I hope the calm stays with you all day. Excuse me? Yes. Um, where can we find your recording um, to the practice that we just did? I will put it on mitation.com or org. No, mitation.com. And I will also give it to Dr. Berg to post it on nasme.org. So he will have it on the, on the site if, if you enjoyed that. And once um, we get more equipment, I'll be able to have actual sound baths um, that, that we can take your body through. And there are a lot of recordings out there for brain entrainment right now, if you're feeling nervous, where the sounds are able to put you into a, a deep theta state where you're immediately relaxed. And you'll notice you'll hear a lot of birds on those tape birds and you'll hear thunder. Actually, that's nature's way of resetting our whole nervous system, which a lot of people don't realize when they say, I've got to get away to the city and go up north, they don't realize that it's a self-healing, that those sounds, the water, the rain, the wind, the birds are, are natural ways that we automatically reset our nervous systems and your immune system completely strengthens and improves as a result of good sounds. Really? Wow. I didn't know that your immune system improved from that. Absolutely. Absolutely, it strengthens and, and you're healthier as a result. Okay, um, is there a specific name for the practice that we just did? The practice that we did is a visualization with sound. I also do vibrational sound bowl therapy where there are special bowls designed. Um, they're, they're not designed for a, a sound bath, for an external sound bath like you might hear after a yoga class but they're placed actually on your body. And when you play the sounds, the vibrations go into your body and it's like a massage therapy. And it's very good for the nervous system, which enhances the immune system. Okay. What did you say that was called? Vibrational sound therapy, VST. And I will also give, all of this was based on research, but I know we wanted to have more practice. So I will give the research and the papers to Dr. Berg to place on NASME for anyone who's interested in exploring this a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And is there a way, Dr. Dyke, to get in touch with you? Should we want to do another demonstration or oh, a presentation? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can um, share my email or you can go to myintation.com and I would be glad to share if you want another session or if you think your students would like to hear a session. Especially right now during this crazy time, it does, it's like an anchor for people too. It gives them a positive boost. Humming is a wonderful way to self heal. Humming, just humming. And for those who don't feel comfortable saying home, ohm, 
I say om or just am. Um, I teach children to bzzz. Anything that vibrates the chest is like giving that vagus nerve a, a gentle massage. So if you so if you find that you hum when you're nervous, that's no accident. Um, or when you mm, when you're trying to figure things out, it's the natural. There's a lot of things that we do that we don't realize. For example, when you're stressed out very often, or if you've done a heavy workout, you go. Whew, that's the body's natural way to reset. There are so many fun things about the body, the gifts that we've forgotten. Can you show again exactly where the breastbone was at for the tapping? Right, right underneath the neck. And they call this the heart center, but it's not really just because of the heart. It's, it's because of the chakras, whether you believe in that or not, but that energy that does exist and the thymus is right there which also um, helps the immune system it's like giving it a massage and the other tapping that many of you may have seen is forehead lip eye chin collarbone and when you do that it it is very calming i i um I know it's because it's the uh, acupuncture points, but it, it does work. And again, it's like that field. The more you practice, the easier it's going to be to, to go right to that calm space because your body is going to be aware of what you're doing and you have an expectation because you felt it. When you feel that joy, same thing with meditation. When you feel that joy of meditation, um, it's easier each time you go in. You go deeper and it's easier. And not every time is going to be easier because there are times you have that monkey mind, but 